<clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm Smriti, and I was Siley's mentor for these past few months. I had an awesome time. It was my first time mentoring, and I was a bit nervous, but Siley made it really easy, and I had a lot of fun working with you. I was super impressed with all that you've accomplished. I probably don't always realize how hard it is to do things. Like if I was a sixth or seventh grader, I don't think I would have been able to do any of those things. So it's really awesome. I can't wait for her to tell you guys what she's done. So for a little bit about my mentor, um, as you heard, she's a student at MIT, and she's currently studying computer science. Um, she was also a magic mentee when she was in seventh grade, so that's really cool. And she also went to Cassidy for high school. Um, the topics that she's interested in right now are mainly creating mobile applications and also anything to do with artificial intelligence. And in her spare time, she enjoys dancing and anything to do with music. Um, I really want to participate in this magic program because it seemed like a really fun way to learn programming and also um, I really support the idea of having more active girls in programming because I think it's a really um, positive message for girls. And um, I've had a really, really fun experience. I've learned a lot from a new programming language to basics that you can use in any programming language that you try. Um, I also really enjoyed being able to pick my own topic that I was really interested in because I always want to learn about the brain, but I had a problem that either the facts that I looked at were a little bit too simple and not in-depth enough, or it was a little bit too hard for what I could understand at the time. Um, so this was a perfect way for me to learn about the brain. Um, so the project that I did was an interactive app that helps people learn about the brain. We started off by researching the brain and picking which parts we thought were important to include in the app because we didn't want to have too many things so that it wouldn't really teach you much. Um, after that, we built a prototype on Scratch just so we could lay out what the different features of the app would be, what we wanted to do, and what it would look like. And our main goal was an iOS application, so we decided to learn Swift through one of Apple's tutorials, which is the picture here. Um, that's a picture of the Scratch program, and it was a pretty simple sprite program. And this is the food tracker app, so you had a meal name and you could enter it and you could also set the label text back to default. And we had a picture of my cats in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a little bit more about my project. After we started the did a tutorial, we started our actual project. And we decided to have two modes, one for actually learning about the brain and one for testing what you learned while using the app. And some key things we learned about were dictionaries, classes, IV actions, and IV outlets, which are basically like when you press a button or what you want to happen when something happens. Also debugging, for sure. <laughs> the process of prototyping and designing an app, and also a little bit of graphic design with the app logo shown there. Um, so the next few slides are a little bit about how the app works and what the different features are. Um, so these are a few of the main frames in the app. The first one on the very right is the home page, where you have the option to learn about the brain or take a quiz. And then afterwards, if you click learn about the brain, it takes you to an image of the brain with a few buttons on it, and every button uh, is on a different part of the brain, and it'll tell you a little bit about that part. Yeah, if you click on that, it takes you there. And then if you click on one of the white stars, it gives you information about that. And then after you click around a little bit, you can go to take a quiz, and then it'll ask you questions. And if you get the question wrong, it'll say you're incorrect, and it won't activate the button to go to the next question. But if you do get the answer correct, then it should activate the next button. <laughs> um, so a little bit about what, we're, what programming we use for each specific part. For the learning mode, you have to have buttons on each part of the brain to display information. And this was tricky for us because originally we wanted to be able to tap um, wherever we wanted on the image, but that was hard because all the images overlapped because they were in a rectangle box, so you wouldn't really be able to tell which one you were clicking on. And then also expanding the text so all of it showed instead of cutting it off and using images in our program. And for the quiz mode, this was probably the hardest mode to do. Um, we had dictionaries to match questions with answers. We also had to activate and deactivate the next button based on whether you got the answer right or not. You had to determine if the answer was correct by seeing if it matched the answer in the dictionary. We also had to have um, it fetch new questions from a set of questions that we gave it and had to fetch um, answer choices both true and false from a set. 
It also had to have a question counter to tell you what number of question it was out of seven. Thank you for listening and I hope.